can I just take some exception with your argument? First of all, Certainly. there is this kind of revisionist belief that somehow conservatives in the traditional sense were against some of those social movements, which is just not true. Now, I'm not saying you'd be a confederate, and I'm not even getting to the party switching thing, but there is a direct lineage between hyper-focusing on racial politics in the 1860s and the 1920s and some of the people on the American left that are just completely obsessed with American you know, racial well, politics. It's equality but, versus hierarchy, but, right? But what do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, back then, the slave owners wouldn't have been like, I'm really obsessed with race or well, equality. You know, now, it, I mean, it's, it, obsession with race can be pernicious in many ways, but I think there's a pretty big difference between being obsessed with the idea of racial equality and being obsessed with I racial domination. I think it's equally as pernicious, just they don't have the power to implement it. But we, we kind of already did that. Do you think discussion. I'd do that? Like do you? No, I don't think you would. I mean, I don't know you well enough. You seem rather decent. I, I try my best. But, but like, like, I wouldn't give power to Nicole Hannah-Jones. I don't know who that is. Who's she founded the 1619 Project? Oh, I like, I just read the thing. I don't yeah, know. We much have a, the we have a constitution to prevent us oh, against people like that. But what I'm saying though is that, for example, I'm not against social change. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd love to abolish abortion. For example, I'd love to put fathers back in the home. No doubt. So conservatives are not necessarily always saying no. We don't want to improve. We want to stagnate. We want the correct form of social change. So let me ask this then. Get, let's get to the core of it then. What values are you looking to maximize? Not, See, this not is just a like, great question. Not just like morality, because that could mean the same thing or different things to anyone. But if you were like, if you were to look at a society and were asked to assess its worth, what metrics would you look towards? It's Ability to defend those that can't defend themselves. Okay. Charity, generosity, integrity, faith to your creator, the ability to pass down good and moral values to the next generation, one that believes in work, and one that believes in the cause of the nation above the self. All right. I've got a, an idea. I think that's a that. fairly collectivist point, that last one, though, wouldn't it be? Well, God, the nation above itself. I, I mean, I, I mean you, you could call it collectivist, but I wouldn't say the state, I'd say the idea of the nation. Right. So there's two different things. And those are conflated sometimes by libertarian socialist types, which mm -hmm. is a walking contradiction. I'd love to ask you about that. Sure. But just like it's kind of just being I like a Christian atheist. It. I right? might answer it when you're done, by the way, because yeah. I think my follow up might touch yeah. on that. Yeah. But the the state is a creation of the people. The people are the country. That's why our Constitution, the preamble says we the people, not we the federal government. Right. So the people are the nation. And so that's why I differentiate between the two. Do you have a loyalty? Do you have a belief that you want to create something bigger than yourselves. I think that's a moral good. Uh, to me, and I, I mean, it's with, uh, without meaning to hyperbolize, but to me, that's always strung rather fascist. The myth of the common man, the people, the Volk, you know? The idea that there is a state, and Germany was a state, of course, but Hitler didn't really appeal to the state. It was the concept of the fatherland that he really hit on, and the people were a beating heart of the fatherland. They were an instrumental organ. And to me, the problem with this is that when you get down to it, this thought process, this mentality, it drives men to do terrible, terrible things. Because interpersonally, all of the chemical effects of empathy kick in. I look at you, I see you. But you start bringing in concepts like the nation, the fatherland, and it becomes very easy to convince people to compel themselves towards courses that they would otherwise not. So expected you to use a 1930s reference earlier so congratulations no well, it is, i'm only saying just, i'm not calling you a fascist and, and, and i'm only saying no, that i know you did do the correct i didn't mean to hyperbolize but there's other nations today that have those values that we would never call fascist like japan uh well japan uh, has very strict immigration mm -hmm. well i think korea is actually a, a better example to yeah. be honest i really don't like either of those countries for the reasons that you I've don't described. like korea i think they're what? both deeply conservative countries that, i agree yeah. with you right they're yeah. wonderful and i think they, <laughs> they do so in part because they're um there's a degree of anti-individualism and in the subservience they all expect of the common good now it's funny i feel like our roles are being reversed a little bit here isn't that interesting the common good isn't something i appeal to for me the value i want to maximize no, i just appeal to the good. The good, sure. The Which good is two different things. Um, is freedom. That's what I care about most. And that's what libertarian socialism mm -hmm. is about. There are many types of freedoms, positive and negative. If I might indulge yeah. very briefly, like, is a man thrown to a, a, a lawless desert without food, water, or clothing free? I'm really asking. So, probably no. I agree. He's free to die. But that's an extreme example, sure. not applicable in modern wealthy America. No. Or but, any Western nation. But it's a philosophical base. It's also a Rousseauian argument. Man's born free and he, you know, spends the rest of his life in chains. It's right. just anti commercial in nature. Well, no, but it's it's a base philosophical argument because it's true, they're lawless. There's nothing preventing him from doing anything in that environment, but he has no ability to act on but his But do you know desires. what he does have? Consciousness. 
Well, sure. So that's a natural rights doctrine that I will defend. Well, I, I mean, I like consciousness too. The only point that I'm getting at is when it comes to people's freedom and the ability for people to protect their freedom, this is what I care about. It's what Marx cared about. If you actually read what he wrote, and there, I, I have, I've read Das Kapital, I've read the manifesto. Then you, guess what? He was right about some things. Then you know, but not he, everything. He didn't and talk he was really wrong about, about equality. <laughs> He didn't write on equality. He wrote on freedom because he believed that society was a very complex interlocking network of systems that in some ways liberated men and in other ways enslaved but them. But do you know what he got wrong? He got wrong that sometimes people can be free for other devices that they are not able to regulate. They could be free not from alcoholism, drug addiction, some sort of you know, any other sort of perverse addiction. The idea of freedom is a very libertarian. But view I agree of with that, though. No, I so know you do. The I, greatest I, society. I say that. Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just the greatest society is one where a man is born and there are as few things as possible preventing him from doing whatever he wants for the rest of his life. I totally disagree. So long as, of course, he doesn't deprive others of the ability to do the same. So I think that's a miserable society. Freedom? No, no that's not freedom. That's licentiousness or degeneracy. That's what is, chaos. What is degeneracy? I like men. How about pedophilia? Okay. Well, obviously, you said that whatever he wants is that is as pedophilia a freedom vouch? As long as they don't infringe on the rights of others, I'm sure you could believe. I would believe. Well, that so then, so there are others. limits on freedom. Is what you're saying? It's not this wild west campaign. Yeah, well, so where do you, you get those limits from? Well, obviously, you would probably have to have a pretty complex interlocking legal system to determine what we agree upon is like a reasonable limits we can place on people's behavior. We have that now to an extent. No, I know. So like pedophilia, bad. That right? would be a bad thing. Okay, kidnapping. That would be a bad thing. Rape. That would be a bad thing. Why do you think those things are bad? Uh, I think they're bad because you're stripping other people of the ability to do that which they will. With all those examples, you're inflicting harm on a person. How about dealing drugs? Uh, I think that dealing drugs is a person's freedom, as is taking but a person's... You're, you're taking what some... about dealing drugs to kids? Uh, dealing drugs to kids? Uh, I think I would disagree with that, probably because I think there's something exceptional about addictive substances and children. Mm. That being said, I think a lot of stuff would apply to children, specifically contract law. Kids can't sign contracts, so but there's you, nothing wrong with Do you see what I'm contracts. getting at? Eventually, you do agree that a conservative framework is necessary. But I don't think that's a conservative framework, because well, there are other things I care about that you would always disagree with, like collective ownership of the means of production. Yeah, I totally disagree. Which, I think private property and freedom are linked together. Which Here's, would give workers the most freedom possible. We've definitely gone along, because it was just... But so, this so been... Helpful, fantastic. Right? It's fantastic. It feels like it's been five minutes. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, right, going. right. And, and Ian, you've collected a Jeez, bunch of great like 50 uh, So, So, right, right. I'm going to use the restroom. Is that okay? Uh, go away. All right, yeah, go. Do it if to it. It's going to take like 100 you, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you can well, I, I'm kind of interested in what you think about. I think humans are inherently destructive by nature and that if you took a human and put him in a room with a bunch of small animals and plants, over time, his hunger, purely because of hunger, ultimately, he would destroy and consume all of those animals and all of those plants. And then if you put another human in there, one of those would eventually destroy and consume the other human. I do think that we are um, maybe inherently expansionist. Um, I think that might be a defining trait of our species. Life. It's the, I mean, we conquered the world. And God willing, we survive. A thousand years from now, we'll conquer the stars. And that's unique to us. Other animals don't do that. I don't know if that's a good thing. Maybe everything they, would have they, been better. They do this. Hmm? Every animal does. The, 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 the issue is Build that... spaceships? No, 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 no. Uh, expand. Expansion. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. But I, not built spaceship. That'd be cool, though. You know, dollars over, taken off. Over time, the, um, the, 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 the limits of their abilities constrain them to a given area, a given population. But we clearly haven't been kept in that way. Intelligence We're has separated smart. us from, that, uh, uh, from, the from the equilibrium. A lion, fight, you know, chasing a gazelle. The gazelle, you know, runs faster. The lion has to run faster. The zebras and the stripes are confusing. Some get away, some don't. There's a natural adaptation process. We know what evolution is. But humans, we adapt instantly. We are like, hey, that bird's flying. I got an arrow. And we have, and and there are. Uh, I just, I just want to say, yeah. we're talking about evolution. Oh, um, yeah, non-controversial <laughs> topic. No, no. Well, in a in a non-controversial way, believe it yes. or not, you'll have to catch the behind the scenes release. I just want to say that's that. I don't, I don't have much optimism for the human condition. I'm not like a huge optimist about this. We are, I think, very potentially destructive. Mm. I just think that we also experience, or, or we're better, we're better receptive to reward uh, incentives than any other thing. So.